Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So I thought that I would kind of review this video overall by Dante's Box of Nation because I found it particularly interesting. And the reason why I decided to review this video compared to other videos is because I think that this is really the perfect video to kind of review for this subject because we're not only going to be talking about Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Bud Crawford in this video, we're also, in my opinion, going to be talking about who is going to be the future number one pound for pound fighter within the next few years. And of course, that is probably going to entail not only Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford, but Canelo Alvarez, debatably Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury as well, and maybe a few other contenders that maybe I think could possibly get there as well. But anyways, of course, a lot of people have been lately talking about this Terrence Bud Crawford versus Errol Spence Jr. fight. And I think, of course, that this is a colossal fight. I think that this is a great fight. And this is going to give me an opportunity to not only talk about a multitude of the pound for pound rankings that I have, but it's also going to give me an opportunity to talk about more of the business side of boxing, especially when we talk about a possible Terrence Bud Crawford versus Earl Spence Jr. fight. And what are Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford going to have to do, in my opinion, to become the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport of boxing, or at least debatably be there? Because Canelo Alvarez, in my opinion, as of right now, he is the undisputed number one pound for pound boxer in all of boxing. And of course, a certain amount of people will disagree with that. But just taking a look at his resume, just taking a look also at his skill set and a certain amount of other things, I don't really think that there's any doubt about it. But anyways, Dante's Boxing Nation, he's going to be talking about this fight. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so you just heard what Roy Jones said, and just for the record, he has not retracted what he said since he said this. I felt this was a perfect time to talk about what Roy Jones said, because I never made a video on what he said. So Roy Jones, he says in order to become pound for pound the best fighter in the world, he's talking to Errol Spence, he has to fight Terrence Crawford. Now, one of the most important things you need to know. Well, just to talk about that real quick, I believe for either of them, Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford saying, for either of them to become the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, or at least debatably, they're going to have to get that win over each other. <laughs> There's no other win in the world, in my opinion, that can put them as the number one pound for pound fighter. It just is what it is. You know, because both Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford, they are clearly in the top 10 to top 5 pound for pound, in my opinion. So they're going to have to get that win over each other if they want to be in the top 5 pound for pound. I would say that, you know, which one more likely would to surpass Canelo if Canelo Alvarez overall, uh, or excuse me, you know, to surpass Canelo as the debatable number one pound for pound fighter. I would say that if Terrence Crawford would get the victory, that more than likely he would have more of a debate because he has more work within other weight divisions. Earl Spence Jr., if he beats Terrence Crawford, of course, he can debatably be the number one pound for pound fighter. However, he does not have work in other weight divisions like a Canelo Alvarez. So <laughs> I do think that Terrence Crawford more than likely would have the better chance, but we'll see all in all what happens. This is Notice, Roy Jones didn't say anything about a split. He didn't say, oh, man, but, you know, Terrence has to agree to this. He's saying, I want to see the fight. The fight needs to happen. You know why? Because this is how boxing fans, real boxing fans, think. Well, you know, yes, that is how boxing fans think. But most boxing fans, most people in general, don't really have the scope, you know, we're really understanding overall the business of boxing and the business of sports, you know, in, in general. I mean, you know, Earl Spence, you know, listen, at the end of the day, it's like this. And I made a couple of videos on this lately. And, of course, the Terrence Bud Crawford fans, they <laughs> flood my comment section. And they basically call me an Earl Spence Jr. fanboy and all sorts of stuff. Listen, at the end of the day, bottom line is this. Earl Spence Jr. is the bigger draw. He's the person all in all that not only attracts more butts and seats and gets the higher numbers, whether we talk about pay-per-views or even just a regular fight. But on top of that, Earl Spence Jr. is giving Terrence Bud Crawford the opportunity to fight for the majority of the belts. And on top of that, he has usually faced competition when they were A-grade. He's already fought the majority of the A-grade fighters in the welterweight division. There is no debate. If Terrence Crawford wants to take this Errol Spence Jr. fight, he is more than likely going to have to accept a 60-40 split. It just is what it is. 
Now, a certain amount of people, they'll comment and they'll say, well, you know, the fact that you say that, you know, it proves that Errol Spence Jr. is afraid of Terrence Bud Crawford because, you know, people don't ask for, you know, a, you know, a split or they don't just discuss the split unless they're scared. Well, let me say this, you know, does Errol Spence Jr. realize that Terrence Bud Crawford is a different type of fighter? Does he realize all in all that Terrence is a very big threat? Yes, he does. And I think that that's a big part of the reason why he is asking for a 60-40 split. But he has every right to do that. It's the same thing what Oscar De La Hoya did against Floyd Mayweather Jr. It's the same thing what Floyd Mayweather Jr. did against Manny Pacquiao and Miguel Cotto did against Canelo Alvarez. And if you want to fight that bad, you must realize when you're the A-side and when you're not the A-side. It just is what it is. And Terrence Bud Crawford is not the A-side here. And 60-40 is not some lucrative deal. It's not something that is completely unfair or out of the ordinary. You know, because Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, and, and I said this, you know, and uh, someone in my comment section said, well, Errol Spence, he's not that big of a draw because he only gets about 250,000 pay-per-view buys, you know, in his last fight. And, you know, that's not good. That's basura is, is what he said, which pretty much means trash. And, you know, I get it, but we're not comparing Errol Spence Jr. to that overall of a Floyd Mayer the Jr., we're not comparing him overall to a Manny Pacquiao. We're not comparing him to a Canelo Alvarez. We're comparing him to a Terrence Bud Crawford. And when we take a look at Terrence Bud Crawford, every single pay-per-view that he has had, it hasn't even done over a hundred, over 200,000 pay-per-view buys. Some of them have not even done over 100,000 pay-per-view buys. So there is no debate about who is the bigger star. And on top of that, who is going to have the majority of the belts? So at the end of the day, Errol Spence is bringing more to the table than what Terrence Bud Crawford is. So Errol Spence Jr. is looking at it, and he's basically saying, this is a potentially dangerous fight overall. And if one of us loses, you know, I'm making sure overall that I'm getting the majority of the paycheck here. Because with any dangerous fight like this, or with any fight overall that is a 50-50 fight, any loss that you have in your boxing career, that is money out of your bank account. That is money overall out of your paycheck, I should say. Because especially in boxing, the more you lose <laughs> overall, the less value that you usually have. Now, there's certain fighters that can lose multiple times and their value still will be very, very high, but very rarely. You know, those are the fighters like Manny Pacquiao or some of those other fighters. But, you know, the usual guys, you know, especially maybe like a Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence Jr., if they lose, you know, one time, they're still going to have a lot of value, but their peak value will never be the same. So at the end of the day, Earl Spence is saying, listen, this is a dangerous fight for both of us. I'm the A side. I'm going to get the money advantage here. It just is what it is. It's like if you take a look at football when it comes down to it. There's certain players that they have guaranteed contracts or if they were to get injured, you know, they have this guaranteed amount of money. And some people may say, well, that's a bad, you know, a bad business model because why would the NFL team or why would a sports team basically give them a promised amount of money, you know, basically just in case they got hurt because then they're just wasting money for a guy that could potentially get hurt. You know, sure, we can take a look at it like that. But at the end of the day, there's exceptions for exceptional people. You know, not every NFL player is going to get a contract like that. If you like, if you uh, were to talk about, say, someone like a, uh, you know, you know, my team is the Carolina Panthers. Let's say you were to talk about a wide receiver like a Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson isn't going to get a guaranteed contract. He's he's not going to be someone that gets this guaranteed amount of money overall. You know, for like let's say sixty million dollars for this certain amount of years, even if he doesn't play. Those are for the top echelon of players like Aaron Rodgers you know, or Devontae Adams or Tom Brady. Those are the guys that can demand contracts like that because at the end of the day, they're one of the top five, top 10 players within the whole entire league when it comes down to it. So they can demand a contract like that because like I said, there's exceptions for exceptional people. And at the end of the day, they're saying, if you want me to stay in your franchise, all in all, you know, just in case I get hurt, I'm bringing you my values, I'm bringing you my health, I'm bringing you my productivity, and I may get injured on this franchise. If you want me to bring my talents here, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to give me a deal that is somewhat comfortable, that I think overall is my value. Now, some people overall may say, well, Terrence Crawford believes that he's very valuable as well. Why does he have to accept the 60-40 split? Easy, because when it comes down to it, he's not the A side here. And he is not worth, in my opinion, a 50-50 split. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that I don't want the fight to happen. But at the end of the day, Terrence Bud Crawford, <laughs> he is going to have to accept more than likely a 60-40 split. And that is not something overall that is out of the ordinary. That's not bending him over. That's not overall a deal that is completely out of the ordinary. Let's talk about another boxer, for example. We could talk about Saul Canelo Alvarez. You know, Saul Canelo Alvarez, if he were to face Arthur Bidabeev next... 
Do you think if our Tabitabi went in there and asked and said, okay, you know, yeah, I want this fight to happen, but I want 50-50, do you think that that would happen? Of course not, <laughs> because Canelo Alvarez knows that that's a very dangerous fight, and he says, no, nah, we're not playing that because I'm the clearly bigger star. And to be honest with you, if our Tabitabi versus Sul Canelo Alvarez happen next, Better be might not even get 40%. He may get more along the lines of 30 or 20. <laughs> because Canelo, like I said, is the clear biggest star in all the boxing right now. So like I said, it's all about the value. It's all about taking the money when they can. That's why Floyd Mayer the Jr. asked for a 60-40 split over Manny Pacquiao. That's why Miguel Cotto asked for his A side of the money over Canelo Alvarez. And if you truly are that confident in yourself, Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford... You know, a 60-40 split shouldn't be that big of a problem. And then after you possibly beat Earl Spence Jr., at least in your opinion, then all in all, if you beat him and if Earl Spence wants a rematch, then you're the one that can stipulate the terms. You're the one overall that can say, okay, well, you know what? Before you wanted to do this 60-40 bullshit, in fact, if you want to rematch me, hell, tell you what, we'll do 70-30. That's how that works. <laughs> you increase your value overall by defeating the better opponents. And if Earl Spence Jr. does want to rematch you, then he'll have to stipulate to your terms. But right now, Mr. Terrence Craw Crawford, you did not make the right moves in order to be the A-side to ask for a 50-50 split. Let me put it this way. If Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, because they always say that they had to clean up both sides of the streets. If you think that you're going to get a 50-50 split because Earl Spence went in there and fought the majority of the A-grade fighters, like Kell Brook when he had a belt, and Sean Porter, and, you know, Danny Garcia, and Mikey Garcia... And now you're Dana Sugas for potentially the third unified title. If you think that Earl Spence Jr. is going to get a, give you a 50-50 split when he did all that hard work in the main division and you were the one that just captured the WBO title by facing, you know, Jeff Horn and then defended it, defended it against Idris Kabalaskas and Jose Benavidez Jr. and, you know, a washed up Americana, washed up Kell Brook. If you think you're going to get a 50-50 split because of that, you're sorely mistaken. You're not going to be sitting over here saying, well, man, if uh, Crawford, if he's talking about he want 40% or if he's talking about he want 50%, I don't even want to watch the fight. How are people sitting in the comment section more focused on how much money either one of them are going to get as opposed to saying, man, I hope this fight happens. I really want to see it. Like Roy Jones Jr. just said. I don't know if a lot of people are really saying, well, you know, if there isn't a 60-40 split, I don't want to see the fight happen. I'm not saying maybe there isn't some people who are saying that, but are, are there really a lot of people saying that in the comment section, Dante, or did you kind of make that up overall to kind of prove your point? <laughs> like you guys often hear me say, that's what negotiations are for. I keep telling you guys, when it comes to Terrence Crawford, Terrence, he keeps speaking. He keeps calling out Errol Spence. He goes on his Instagram. He has things to say. He sends tweets directly to Errol Spence. So we know Terrence Crawford is already talking. When it comes to Errol Spence, he's not saying too much, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is... Th and this is what Errol Spence is saying. He says, I'm doing all the heavy lifting. And a certain amount of people, you know, they'll say, well... You know, that just means that he's scared of Terrence Bud Crawford. Listen, Earl Spence Jr. realizes that he's a big threat. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. Of course he does. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, Earl Spence has been doing all the heavy lifting. You know, it just is what it is. How, how is Terrence Crawford going to demand a 50-50 split when Earl Spence has fought Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Kell Brook, you know, then your Dana Sugas, then Mikey Garcia, and Terrence is fighting guys over here like Jose Benavidez and Idris Kyle Velasquez. Like, come on, man. There are fans that are trying to speak for Errol Spence. You guys don't have to speak for Errol Spence. That's like if Jamal Charlo, like if he went into the Canelo Alvarez fight and he said, yeah, I'll fight you, Canelo Alvarez, but the only way I'm going to fight you is if I get a 50-50 split. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Because Canelo is facing repeated A-grade fighters usually, or at least the matchups that the public find very, very interesting. So Canelo always gets a great amount of views. Like I said, he is the biggest star in the sport. There is no fighter in the world right now that can demand a 50-50 split over Canelo Alvarez. It is what it is. And there's no one in the welterweight division that can demand a 50-50 split with Earl Spence Jr. No one. Let this man speak for himself, just like Terrence Crawford is speaking for himself. And you know, this just amazes me sometimes. Because as a black American, with us having the most dominant fighters in the entire sport of boxing, the most avoided, 
the most gifted, the most talented, but at the same time, the most hated by the races, which unfortunately happens to be the vast majority of boxing. I love how Dante always complains about the races. Dante's Boxing Nation, his new, uh, <laughs> he should he should overall change his name to the pot calling the kettle black. That's what his channel's name. That's what his channel's name should be. Cause that's all Dante is. I love how they always alleges about these you know racist overall in the woodwork. Dante, you're one of those groups, man. <laughs> I don't I don't know why you always talk about these races for you. You're you're one of the biggest races out here. I don't. Oh man, it's funny. Fans. My point is, when you have the two most dominant fighters. In the welterweight division, and you know that everyone who's not black is rooting against them, then that's clearly not going to be the fight that I'm going to be in a hurry to watch. Is everyone overall that is not black truly rooting against them? Now, maybe there's more people all in all, you know, than I think. Now, don't get me wrong. Are there a certain amount of demographics, or are there times to where, you know, it seems like all the other demographics are cheering against this one black athlete? Yeah, certainly there are times like that. No doubt about it, like with Floyd Mayer the Jr. or, you know, maybe a John Jones or certain other demographics. But, you know, is <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not sure if every other demographic is, is just completely against Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence Jr., especially Earl Spence. I don't know a lot of people who just, you know, write down hate Earl Spence Jr. But there are a certain amount of people, you know, including myself, that do get annoyed with Terrence Bud Crawford to a certain degree because Terrence Bud Crawford, once again, for a dude that is debated as the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter, you only have one A-class win in your career. <laughs> like, let's just slow your roll. Unless they are the last two standing. And that is the situation right now. Once again, I've always told you guys years before, there's no reason for them to fight right now. Let both of them clean up their side of the division. And when there's no other options, that's when they should be fighting against each other. And we have finally come close to that point. Because right now... Yeah, but once again, let's talk about overall what their side of the divisions are. And this is what I'm saying. Like, once again, the Terrence Bud Crawford fans, they can say this all they want to. And I love watching Terrence Bud Crawford. He's one of my favorite fighters. I actually personally would predict Terrence Bud Crawford to more than likely beat Errol Spence Jr., although it is a 50-50 matchup. But like I said, you can't go in there demanding a 50-50 split when you're you're defeating guys like Aegis Kavalaskas and... Jose Benavidez, and Errol Spence is defeating all the big boys in the welterweight division. There's a reason why he's probably going to have three out of the four main titles after this year Dennis Dennis Ugas fight. I mean, come on, man. Errol Spence, he's going to fight your Dennis Ugas, and if he gets past Ugas, he will have three belts, and Terrence Crawford, he has his one belt. Now, going back to Roy Jones, you know, Roy said a lot, and I didn't play everything that he said. There was a couple things he said that I disagree with, like when he discredited Errol Spence's win over Kell Brook. I completely disagree with that. that. That was arguably Errol Spence's biggest win. I have predicted that that would be Errol Spence's most difficult fight at the welterweight division. And up until that point, at least up until the point that he fought Sean Porter, that was his most difficult fight. It certainly was. Kell Brook overall was a very, very tricky fighter. Uh, but Dante, you know, when it comes down to, like I said, it depends on what fighter he's talking about. Because... <laughs> If he's talking about overall, you know, someone like a Canelo Alvarez, we already know the excuses that he made with Danny Jacobs and some of the other fighters. Oh, well, he's fighting guys that have already lost, even if they were in the prime peak of their career and like legitimate A-grade champions like a Danny Jacobs was. So we, we all know what the deal is with Dante's boxing nation. But then then he'll give credit to Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford for defeating a Kelbrook that had already been stopped. Now, I give Earl Spence Jr. a hell of a lot of credit for defeating Kelbrook because that was when Kell Brook still had a little bit of confidence left in his career and could have been counted as an A-grade fighter because Kell Brook, all in all, you know, he was still the IBF champion. When Terrence Crawford finally got to him, Kell Brook was never the same fighter ever again after he lost to Earl Spence Jr. Kell Brook, I don't even know if Kell Brook right now would beat someone like a Danny Garcia or a Josh Taylor. Like, Kell Brook is done at this point in time in his career. He's done. Uh, Kell Brook, just like he did when he fought against Terrence Crawford, Kell Brook put on his best performance losing to Errol Spence. So you can't take away credit and say that wasn't the same. Uh, Kell Brook because I'm getting his eye socket broke. In the well, why not, Dante? Because like I said, make, make up your goddamn mind. <laughs> because let's be real. If Errol Spence were another demographic, you'd be completely taking away credit from him. So with Canelo, you know, beating Danny. Now you do need context because not every, you know, fighter is the same after they get stopped. Some are 
okay after they get stopped. Some are never the same. So, you know, when it comes down to it, like I said, you need context. But, like, Dante would say this bullshit about how Canelo, when he beats Danny Jacobs, oh, Danny had already been stopped before. No shit, but that was, like, seven years earlier. <laughs> and Danny Jacobs improved to, you know, beat Peter Quillen. He had a very rough and tough fight with Gennady Golovkin. And then later on, Canelo would beat him, I believe, when he was the IBF champion. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But then with Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford, he gives them full credit. Or a Devin Haney or a Javante Tang Davis. Gennady Golovkin fight. Because he was doing really well in the Errol Spence fight. In fact, he was winning a lot of the early rounds. Kel Brook, he also managed to win the first round or the first two rounds against Terrence Crawford. But Terrence Crawford is a master at beating fighters at their own game. So no one can take any... Well, I think Terrence Crawford is a boxing genius. Uh... What, what I'll say about Terrence Bud Crawford is this. If he's going to beat Earl Spence Jr., and this is why this fight's so exciting, because, once again, they're going to have to turn it up to another level that they never had before, and that's what the all-time grades do. When, when the occasion rises, they rise to the occasion. You know, so it is what it is. So Terrence Bud Crawford, I'm not saying that he shouldn't fight with Earl Spence on the inside a little bit, especially going to the body, but I do believe that he is mainly going to have to be on the back foot in this fight. You don't want to completely, you know, be defensive, the whole entire fight, in my opinion, you are going to have to, you know, brawl with him a little bit or get him off of you a little bit, you know, especially counter to the body. But in my opinion, Terrence is after, he's going to have to mainly be on the back foot. He has faster feet than Errol Spence. He has faster hand speed. And on top of that, Errol Spence Jr., he's stronger than him, at least I believe. So Terrence is going to have to watch out in that fight. As for Errol Spence Jr., I think he has to go to the body early, stick his jab overall to the body, also in his head. You know, try to maybe get Terrence Bud Crawford in some of those exchanges because sometimes Terrence Bud Crawford, when he does exchange, he does keep his hands down or he does not watch out for incoming punches. So throw some hooks on the exchanges. We'll see what happens. Credit away from Errol Spence when it comes to stopping Kell Brook. Now, I do agree with Roy Jones when he said that Terrence Crawford is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And this is the thing. If Terrence Crawford is the best fighter in the world, first of all, let me go ahead and kind of put all this in chronological order. You guys may recall about, what, two years ago or a year ago, whatever it was. I know it was before the pandemic. People were debating on who is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Some people would say Terrence Crawford. Some people would say Lomachenko. It was always one and two. Either Crawford number one or Lomachenko number two. But what happened was when Lomachenko surprisingly lost to Teofimo Lopez, which a lot of old media did not expect. Instead of doing the honest and right thing, which is if you have Crawford number two on the list, you obviously move him to number one. What old media decided to do is just... I'm glad that Dante brought up this point because he's brought up this point multiple times before. And I get him to a certain degree because are there certain times to where people will rank other fighters over black fighters because they don't like black fighters? Yes. But th this is why I'm glad that he brought it up, because this narrative that Canelo Alvarez or some of these other guys are above Terrence Bud Crawford on the pound for pound list just because they don't like black fighters, it, it depends on who the fighter is. But if you're talking about a soul Canelo Alvarez, no, you can't debate that. The problem is with Terrence Bud Crawford is that, and now when Vasily Lomachenko was my number one pound for pound fighter last year before he lost to Tiafimo, Vasily Lomachenko, in my opinion, you know, of course, once he lost to Tiafimo, he could have no longer been there. But Canelo was at my number two spot. And the reason why that was is because Canelo Alvarez, he had that win over Gennady Golovkin. He also had a win over Danny Jacobs. He also had a win overall eventually over Sergey Kovalev. And he had a win over all these A-grade fighters. And then you take a look at Terrence Crawford's resume. You know, it's great that he unified 140 and, you know, that he beat Jeff Horn and beat Gamboa. But it's like, how many of these guys are really A-grade at the end of the day? That's the problem with Terrence Crawford's resume. He just, he hasn't usually fought nobody. It's no offense against the man. Like I said, I gave, I gave him a lot of credit for defeating Sean Porter and defeating the fighters that he has beaten so far. Like I said, Sean Porter, in my opinion, at the time, was an A-grade fighter. That's the only definitive A-grade win Terrence Bud Crawford has in his career. But like I said, at the end of the day, when you take a look at Canelo's resume, you got Laura, you got Trout, you got Danny Jacobs, you got Golovkin, you got Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders, all these guys on here that are A-grade fighters. You know, it's not that Terrence Crawford... It's not that he's being surpassed by all these fighters because they just want, you know, certain fighters to be over black fighters. And, you know, this is what Dante doesn't understand because he looks at everything emotionally and he doesn't really have the, you know, overall, you know, scope overall to see these sort of things. 
especially because he has that victim-like mentality. It just is what it is. You know, are there certain fighters that are put over black fighters, you know, in order to just promote them over black fighters? Yes. Like, if you're talking about Anaya, what in a way overturns Bud Crawford on the pound for pound list, then you have a case. Because who really has Niowa in a way beat? He may be a three-way division champion, but he hasn't really beat any A-grade fighters. But when you're talking about certain people like a Canelo Alvarez, <laughs> the, 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 the problem is with Terrence Crawford is that, you know, he, he gets surpassed after a while on the pound for pound list because he just stays in the same position. There's no progress. <laughs> you know, he ends up facing these repeated C and B class fighters like Aegis Kavalaskas and Jose Benavides by Earl Spence and Alexander Usyk and Canelo Alvarez and Tyson Fury. They're in generational type of fights or they're in A grade fights. That's why I say all those fighters, in my opinion, you can debate over Terrence Bud Crawford because at the end of the day, all these guys are pretty much doing the heavy lifting of their weight divisions. And what is Terrence Bud Crawford doing? He's facing Aegis Kavalaskas. He's facing Amir Khan when no one is really asking for that fight. He faced, you know, a Kell Brook, a washed up version of Kell Brook, and Aegis Kavalaskas, a Jose Benavidez. So it's not that Terrence Bud Crawford was wrongfully overall put more down. It's just that he wasn't progressing. <laughs> you have to put Canelo over Terrence Bud Crawford when he's beating guys like a Sergey Kovalev, who was a champion at the time, and a Billy Joe Saunders, and a Caleb Plant overall. And on top of that, he had a top five pound for pound win over Gennady Golovkin. So there's only so much you can bitch about when it comes to Canelo being over Terrence Bud Crawford. It's not that overall they put Canelo at number one because they just wanted a Caucasian or Latino fighter to be at the top. Although I'm sure that, you know, there may be a little bit of that. But the main reason, especially why I have my number one pound for pound, is because take a look at Terrence's resume compared to Canelo's. It's not even a comparison. Like the biggest win of Terrence Crawford's career to this day is that Sean Porter win in his last fight. And Canelo Alvarez, I mean, that's pretty much just as big of a win, you know, at the time as what Caleb Plant or Billy Joe Saunders was. Now, some may debate that Sean Porter all in all is a better or a greater fighter than them. But Sean Porter at the time had no belts. He already had three losses on his resume. So it was a good win, but, you know, Canelo has greater wins, even as of lately. So it just is what it is. This poor Canelo, I'm and then on top of that, you have Alexander Usyk that defeated Anthony Joshua, you know, which was a generational type of fight. It was, you know, two gold medalists going at it, and Alexander Usyk was able to beat someone that outsized him by like 20 damn pounds. You know, then he had Tyson Fury, who was able to defeat Deontay Wilder, and he's still undefeated. So he's like on that Andre Ward level because he defeated some of the great fighters of his division, like Vladimir Klitschko and Deontay Wilder. You know, so he he is there, you know. And then, of course, you have Earl Spence Jr., who has almost completely unified the welterweight division. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I like Terrence Crawford, man. He's, he's, a, he's a real dog. He's a real fighter. But at the end of the day, you got to fight real people. You have to fight real competition. It just is what it is. And the, the the win over Sean Porter was fantastic. It was a great step in the right direction. But that's not going to put you at the number one pound for pound spot. You can't be put at the number one pound for pound spot just because, all in all, you beat Sean Porter, a person who already had three losses on his resume and has no belts at this current moment in time. It just is what it is. Nowhere and put him as number one, right? But then when Crawford, when he stopped Sean Porter... That's when a lot of old media came out and admitted that they knew that Terrence Crawford was pound for pound the best fighter in the world all along. Do you guys notice that I'm pushing for this fight, Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence, along with a lot of other people? You know why we're doing this? Because we want to see the best fight the best. And if you're calling Terrence Crawford the best, you should be pushing for him to fight the best. When it comes to Canelo, even Canelo out versus fans, so deep down he's not the best fighter in the world. Because they never want to see Canelo fight the best competition. If you were to ask a Canelo fan right now, would you rather see him fight Macabu or fight Bivol, Berbev, Benavidez, Charlo, Andre? They're going to say they would rather him fight Macabu. Oh, that's. Well, at the end of the day, like I said, I understand why the Macabu fight is happening. It just is what it is, you know? <laughs> and of course, I've had certain people allege that I'm this Canelo fanboy. No, like I said, I'm not a fanboy of any of these fighters, but what I do realize about Canelo is that he is the number one pound for pound fighter, at least at this current moment in time. He just is. It is what it is. And like I said, I don't mind the Makabu fight happening because, like I said, you know, I understand that that's a chase for history because Canelo then would become a champion in the fifth weight class. And like I said, if Makabu is allowed to rehydrate fully, that would pretty much be looked at as like the Roy Jones Jr. versus John Ruiz type of move. 
So I don't have a problem with the fight, at least at the current moment in time, especially after he just recently fought Billy Joe Saunders and Callum Smith and uh, what's his name, uh, Caleb Plant within like the past year. <laughs> I don't really have a problem with that. But after the Makabu fight, he is going to have to once again face A-grade competition. So like I said, that means better be of Gilberto Zerto Ramirez, Bivol, you know, maybe Joe Smith, although I don't really count Joe Smith as an A-grade fighter, but he could potentially get away with that one. Uh, you know, Jamal Charlo, you know, Demetrius Andre, David Benavides. He's going to have to fight one of those guys. So we'll see. Such a tough fight. He's moving up in weight. He's fighting against a really big... But once again, when Terrence Crawford was going to go up to face the clearly weakest champion in 154 and Patrick Texera, go ahead and take a look at his past videos. He was saying, man, you know, this is such a big fight. Like, get the hell out of here. Guy. But we all know that Macaboo is not going to go more than three rounds. And if it was a... T I would not underestimate Makabu or Makabu, however you pronounce his name. Uh, Olunga is a person that, once again, he has a lot of power. And he's, he's not a person with the worst boxing skills in the world. Like I said, he's taken a certain amount of these new prospects out. <laughs> Some of these guys, all in all, like I said, that he has faced in his most recent fights, he hasn't just beat them, he stopped them. And some of these guys, you know, of course, they're not all, they're not really A-grade fighters. I don't think Makabu is an A-grade fighter, but he is bigger than Canelo. He has a lot of power, and he doesn't have the worst skills in the world. So we'll see what happens. The fight, then the fight would end up looking like the Golovkin fight, like the Mayweather fight, like the Lara fight. How many fights have you guys ever seen? Well, not really. You know, <laughs> once again, that's fight math. That, 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 you know, you can't always add it up like that. You know, Floyd Mayweather Jr. had, you know, one of the toughest fights of his life against Miguel Cotto, who was one of the great fighters of the 2000s and 2010s. But then he fought the greater fighter in Manny Pacquiao, and he was able to have an easier time against Manny Pacquiao. So styles make fights. It just is what it is. And Canelo, you can tell at this point in time in his career, he really is, <laughs> he really is overall, like I said, he really is, uh, I'm not going to say unstoppable, but it's going to be very, very hard to beat him. Very, very hard to beat him. So we'll see what happens involving Canelo Alvarez that was his most difficult fight and he ended up stretching a guy and knocking him out cold within the first five rounds. The answer... Well, right, but come on, man. Like, how many elite fighters are doing that in general? How, how many times have we seen Floyd Mayer the Jr.? You know, now if you're just trying to make the point that, well, Canelo, he's he's knocking out guys that aren't A-class. No, Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant were A-class. You have to give Canelo Alvarez credit for those fights, although he won't, but it is what it is, you know. But uh, anyways, at the end of the day, I mean, if we want to talk about knockouts against a great competition, you know, I mean, Terrence, he ended up getting the knockout over Sean Porter. I give him a lot of credit for that, you know. But has Earl Spence knocked out a lot of a great competition? No. The only a great fighter that he was able to knock out was Kill Brook <laughs> and really coming up of a Gennady Golovkin, you know, traumatic injury. So it is what it is, you know, as it was, was, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard able to knock out a lot of, uh, you know, his A-grade opponents. You know, now I guess, you know, technically he did stop, you know, uh, Roberto Duran, I guess, in that rematch. But that, that was more because Roberto Duran quit. But it is what it is. And, of course, he was able to knock out Tommy Hearns, who had, you know, a, a chin of glass. But <laughs> it is what it is. But was he able to knock out Roberto Duran in the third fight? No. You know, was he able overall to knock out Marvin Hagler? No, he was not. Was Floyd able to knock out Miguel Cotto or Manny Pacquiao or Canelo Alvarez? No. So just just because overall a fight may not look super duper tough for just because they don't get the knockout, that doesn't mean that it's not a tough matchup. That doesn't mean that it's not a great matchup. There is zero. I mean, shit, you tried to <laughs> convince us all that Idris Kavalaskis versus Jose Benavidez, which is actually two fights that Terrence someone had problems with, you tried to convince us overall that those were eight great fights. Like, come on, man. Oh, it's happened zero times. The only time Canelo has gotten a very impressive knockout is when he was fighting against C-level opponents like B.J. Saunders, like Plant, Joe Durham. You expect me to believe that Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders, two fighters that were extraordinarily talented and undefeated, you expect me to believe that those are C-grade fighters, but I'm supposed to believe that Idris Kavalaskis and Jose Benavides for Terrence Bud Crawford, that those were decent opponents? Like, get the fuck out of here. Rocky Fielding, and the list goes on and on and on. While you have someone like Terrence Crawford stopping Sean Porter. I hear Canelo fans trying to defend... That's great, but like I said, Sean Porter already had three losses in his career, and he had no belts. It is what it is. 
So like I said, that win is somewhat, you know, if you want to count it as a greater win than that of a Caleb Payne or Billy Joe Saunders, you could, but it's still somewhat along the same lines. And Canelo, oh, but look at who we fought years ago. And then on top of that, Canelo has victories over like Laura <laughs> and, you know, Gennady Golovkin. Gennady, who was like one of the top three, top five pound for pound fighters at the time when Canelo Alvarez was able to get the victory over him. So like I said, the resumes compared with almost anyone else, it's just not even close. Man, he fought Shane Mosley. He fought Trout, Mayweather, Golovkin, etc., etc. So, in other words, you're saying you don't want to see him fight against dangerous competition today because he already did it three years ago. Which means you're admitting that he's not the best and he does not want. Well, that's the problem, Dante. Canelo is facing dangerous competition because Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, <laughs> overall, and uh, what's his name, Caleb Plant, all those guys were eight great fighters. All right, it just is what it is. You know, now, of course, would I love to see the Jamal, Charlo, and David Benavides and Demetrius Andre fights? Of course, but like I said, at the end of the day, those fighters are pretty much all on the same level, you know, including Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, and Callum Smith. They're, <laughs> if you want to argue which one is over the other, you know, go ahead, but they're all somewhat on that similar level. You know, it is what it is. And Dante must know that because when Jamal Charlo was going after Caleb Plant, allegedly, he said that's a great first fight for Jamal Charlo. So, come on. To prove that he's the best, while well, he's not fighting the best, Terrence Crawford is chasing all the smoke. So, with Terrence Crawford being pound for pound... He's allegedly chasing all the smoke, but he doesn't sign with the PBC. And then on top of that, Terrence Bud Crawford, if he goes into this bullshit with Earl Spence Jr. and says, oh, I want a 50-50 split... That'll tell me immediately he's not super serious about taking this fight. The best fighter in the world. The question is, where else would Errol Spence go from here? Assuming he gets past Ugas. It makes all the sense in the world for Errol Spence to obviously say, there's only one fight to make. You guys know who I want, just like Terrence Crawford said after he stopped Porter. You guys already know who I want. I'm expecting Errol Spence to say the same thing. I've heard people in the comment section say, come on, man. We've already heard Errol Spence in his plan. You know, Errol Spence, he said he's going to clean up his side, and then he's going to fight Terrence Crawford. Something interesting that Errol Spence actually said to Terrence Crawford when they met face-to-face. -face. Errol Spence, he actually told Terrence Crawford, he said, it would make more sense for me to go ahead and knock out Sean Porter first and then fight you. This is what Errol Spence said. And that would be about three fights ago after Errol Spence fights Ugas. So with that being said, I believe Errol Spence will call out Terrence Crawford if he gets past Ugas because that is the only fight that makes sense at that time. Now, surely Errol Spence, he has his mandatory, but we already know mandatories are easy to pay off to step aside. And a fight of that magnitude, I don't think the mandatory will mind stepping aside because he's going And you notice overall that when it comes to certain fighters that are trying to go after unification, you know, he'll basically say, oh, well, that's no problem. But when it comes to a Tyson Fury, <laughs> he'll allege that Tyson Fury is ducking and dodging a Dillian White because once again, he hates Tyson Fury's guts. I'm going to get a nice hefty check if he steps aside. So I truly believe there's a very good chance that Errol Spence may actually call out Terrence Crawford, assuming he gets past Ugas, because once again, people are saying that Terrence Crawford is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And on top of that, I think that he has the potential to be, but I can't put him on that level quite as of yet. It just is what it is. You'll be fighting for undisputed. So I think when it comes to Errol Spence, he's going to do whatever it takes to make the fight. What I will say is this, though. If Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence do get a fight with potentially all the belts in the welterweight division, and let's say that Terrence Bud Crawford were to go become completely unified in the welterweight division, that means that that would be his second weight division that he would be completely unified in. It certainly would be hard to deny him at least a possible number one pound per pound spot, if not him surpassing Canelo in my number one pound per pound rankings. Now, some people overall would say, well, you know, do you think that Canelo Alvarez, you know, beating maybe an Archer B to Beaver, some of these other, you know, possible light heavyweights or other fighters would put him back at the number one pound for pound spot, or do you think that that would keep him over Terrence Bud Crawford? It could. That, Like I said, Terrence Bud Crawford, I do believe that if he beats Earl Spence Jr., especially if it is going to be for all the belts, 
Terrence Bud Crawford certainly is going to have to be in that conversation for the number one pound for pound fighter. It's either going to have to be Canelo Alvarez or Terrence Bud Crawford, clearly, in my opinion. So we'll see overall what happens for that. But it is going to be hard to at least 100% surpass Canelo, at least 100%, because Canelo just does have so many A grade names. And on top of that, he has so many other A grade contenders that he could face. Terrence Bud Crawford, I suppose, does too. But with Canelo, I mean, you know, especially if he goes on to beat Charlo Benavidez, especially Archer B2B, who, in my opinion, you could also debate as one of the top 10 pound for pound fighters right now. You know, like I said, that main war for number one pound for pound spot is going to be between Terrence Bud Crawford and Canelo Alvarez. That's if Terrence Bud Crawford defeats Earl Spence Jr. And of course, if Earl Spence is able to beat Terrence Crawford, he'll be in that conversation as well. But I would say that Canelo more than likely would beat him out on the number one pound for pound spot even if he does beat Terrence, although he clearly would be number two, in my opinion, if he does beat Terrence, because Errol Spence just doesn't have any other work in any other weight divisions. So we'll see what happens. I truly believe Terrence Crawford. He's going to definitely do whatever it takes to make the fight. Now, for boxing fans, at least the ones that I've seen in the comment section saying crazy stuff, I'm like, look, man, all I know is Terrence Crawford, he better take the 40%. If he asking for half the money, and I don't even want to watch the fight because he don't deserve half the money. You're saying something like that and you're... I don't, I don't even know who is saying that. Who, who is saying these things? <laughs> I would need to see evidence of this. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, I mean, who is saying overall, well, if it's anything less than a 60-40 split, I don't want to see the fight. I don't know. Maybe Earl Spence Jr. fans that feel that maybe Terrence Bud Crawford would beat him. And maybe they just don't want to see the fight because of that. I don't know. But at the end of the day, or they're trying to make excuses for Spence, but... I don't know a lot of people who are saying that flat out. You're not even getting a percentage of the money. You're not even a part of Terrence Crawford or Errol Spencer's team. And you're making it seem like you care more about how the money is divided as opposed to the actual fight. The only reason you would say this is because you are worried the wrong guy may win. But like I said, I truly... I agree to a degree, but however, what I will say is this. Terrence Bud Crawford, if he is truly interested in this fight, you know, he will accept the 60-40 split because, once again, he ain't getting the 50-50 split for this. <laughs> we believe Errol Spence, he is going to step up after the Ugas fight because that, once again, is the only fight that makes sense. Unless Errol Spence is going to end up fighting in Virgil Ortiz or someone like that. This is the biggest fight in the sport of boxing right now. Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Smartphones were more than just smart. The all new Google Pixel 6 with a 24 hour digital battery that sends power precisely where you need it. Google Pixel 6. We're boxing right now. Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. And I know a lot of you guys really don't want to see it deep down, but I got bad news for you. It's pretty much inevitable. You see, it's going to happen now at 147, or it's going to happen really soon at 154, because both fighters are planning on going up in weight. They're going to both move up to 154, and then Jerron Ennis is going to take over and become the new generation best fighter at 147. Well, hopefully, if Jerome Butzenis does become a serious threat, hopefully we will see Terrence Bud Crawford or Earl Spence Jr. fight him as well. But it'll be very, very interesting. i close out with saying this. I can guarantee you right now, the stuff that you guys hear on the internet with people once again trying to say, uh, we not going to take no 60-40, we not going to take 50-50, making it seem like they're a part of the negotiation process. I'm telling you guys right now, if this fight doesn't happen, it won't have anything to do with a split. But once again, the funny thing is... I highly doubt that. <laughs> There's been a lot of fights, actually, that have been broken up because uh, the negotiations could not get agreed upon because of a money split. All right? It is what it is. That's the reason why it took Mayweather versus Pacquiao so long to make overall, at least when the negotiations started. So it is what it is. It's, I'm seeing certain people in the comments section... They're making it seem like if Errol Spence did accept a 50-50 split, if they had Errol Spence's number, they would call him 
up and would be begging for him. No, man, don't take the 50-50. Make him take 40 or don't give him a fight at all. This is the way they're talking, which clearly proves they're hoping this fight does not happen for obvious reasons. I'm on to the next one, y'all. I understand your point to a degree, but like I said, you know, I, you know, I really would not care all in all if it's a 50-50 split, but what I am saying is this. If Errol Spence Jr. does demand a 60-40 split, I do understand all in all, you know, why he would ask for that. And he would have the right to ask for it. So it is what it is. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you all later.